Hello everyone, Gary here from Timeline Astrology. So this is a case study on the royal family and families in general, I would say, because I wanted to show you the sort of, the way charts are linked in families are so fascinating because of course families are all very familiar. You know, we have fam familiar dynamics going on within families. So therefore, obviously that should be shown in charts, in birth charts. Similar themes, planets together, conjunctions, planets and signs, some similar themes, even if it's just same rising sign in some cases, as you'll see in these cases, and quite a lot besides, because families are linked like in that kind of karmic way, right? So, of course, you might have heard recently that King Charles has been diagnosed with cancer. We don't know what kind of cancer he has. It hasn't been released yet, but obviously the whole family is going to be impacted by that. And the changes that's obviously going to create in the whole family dynamic should show up in all of their charts. And indeed it does. And I wanted to show you how you don't ha just have to look at one chart. You can look at the whole of the family chart or charts. So here we have, and the great thing about Royal families, especially is that we have very often very good times of birth for them. So this isn't an issue. Apart from the Princess of Wales, it's an A-rated time. It's still pretty good A-rated, but most of them are A-rated. So really good times. So we can really be assured that we have the right chart. And so you can see here, as I go through these charts, I'm going to show the King and Queen, current King and Queen. I'm going to show Prince William and Princess of Wales. Then I'm going to show Prince Ham, Harry and Meghan Markle those six charts and show all the commonalities between all of these charts and also all the changes that they're going through right now as well. Lots of change on the horizon in, in, in this immediate time frame, really. So King Charles was born with cancer rising, as was Camilla, as was Princess of Wales, Kate Middleton, as was Meghan Markle. So already I've got four out of the six of them that have cancer rising. The other two, Prince William and Prince Harry have Sagittarius rising. So that's something to think about straight off the bat. Cancer rising, obviously all cancer risings are dealing with the Saturn transit in the eighth house Aquarius right now. And the eighth house brings changes in whatever way it brings it, it brings it. And so there might be some changes in the family dynamic, like the in-laws, if you marry into a family, they're your in-laws. So in the case of obviously Meghan Markle and in the case of, well, all of them really, um, they're experiencing their in-laws going through changes as well as themselves. Because of course, Saturn in the eighth house also aspects the second house opposite. And that's the family. So in his case, King Charles, he has Saturn in the second house. So that's another one. And, and so you can see there's an impact here. In the case of a lot of them, again, there's some similarities. We have it in three, I believe, three of the six. So it's only half, but it's still quite significant. Um, Rahu Moon conjunction. We have it in King Charles's. We have it in the Prince of Wales, Princess of Wales, sorry, Catherine. And we also have it, sorry, we also have it in the Prince of Wales, uh, Wales uh, Prince William. Those three have Rahu Moon conjoined. Now, why would you have that so often? And if it's not Rahu Moon, it's like Ketu involved in some way. It's Rahu or Ketu always with the royal family. Essentially, the reason that is, is because... The eclipses, Rahu Ketu, eclipse the sun and moon, of course. They don't eclipse planets. They eclipse the sun and moon. So therefore, the sun and moon are the prominent during... Um, when someone's born during an eclipse, the sun and moon are prominent, obviously. And the eclipse is making it more prominent. It's obscuring it in one way as well, so we'll get to that in a minute. But in, in one simple way, it's bringing someone into prominence. Eclipses, does they do that. And so... When you think about the sun and moon, it's literally the king and queen, sun and moon. So it's obvious that, you know, when you think about Leo as the royal sign ruled by the sun and cancer, the, the feminine, the queen sign in a way, it's interesting how these are very prominent in, in these charts. But it's always the case that eclipses are prominent in royal charts. I haven't looked at it so much in other royal families. British family is just very easy to access with times of birth. I haven't really looked at it as much in other royal families around the world. But certainly it makes sense to have the nodes prominent. So what happens is, and you'll see this, it was the case for the Queen, Queen Elizabeth, who died recently. It's the same for Prince William, um, who both have Ketu rising in Sagittarius. 
Ketu is like the being born into a role, a being born into privilege, wealth and privilege. That's its connection to Magha in the sign Leo, the lunar mansion at the beginning of sidereal Leo. Magha is symbolized by a throne, by a crown, a royal crown. Basically, you're born into something. We're all born into some privilege or other anyway, that's Ketu. But obviously with royals, it's very prominent and you get born into privilege and you are born on an eclipse. In a way, it's almost like if you want to be in any way in a chance to be born or marry into, in, in the case of obviously Meghan and Catherine, if you want any chance at all of being married into royal family, make sure you're born on an eclipse, <laughs> basically. Um, so you're born into privilege, that's Ketu. But the flip side of that always is Rahu, where there's always this price to pay. So it's all very well and good to say, I'm born into this wealth, that's Ketu. But then you have Rahu to deal with on the other side of the equation. And in a lot of these charts, it's Rahu, Moon. And Moon is their lord, where the king, the queen, princess of uh, Wales for Meghan Markle, she's four of them have cancer rising. So... There's always that price to pay and Rahu in any way influencing the moon. It just brings a lot of fear. It brings a lot of uh, obsessions, compulsions. King Charles has a lot of them. He has a lot of eccentricities, a lot of idiosyncratic behaviors that are quite interesting, shall we say. You know, he can afford to have them, you might say as well. You know, he's obviously so wealthy, but, you know, he has a lot. If you look into what he does um, on his daily in his daily routine, he has so many eccentricities. It's unreal. Um but anyway, it's born of fear, essentially. It's like a need to try and keep control of a situation you don't have control over because you have no control over the fact that you were born into this family that you have to play this role. And that's the Ketu side of things. Now, for the Queen Elizabeth, who had Sagittarius rising with Ketu in Sagittarius, and for Prince William, they're more born into that in a kind of easier way. There's going to be a probably easier transition into King William than there has been into King Charles. Because King Charles is just not your typical king. And I mentioned this before in a previous video. This is, he's just not your typical king. Um, you know, with the cancer and all of that, he's just not. Anyway, Rahu Moon is common, like I said, in, in, in so many of them. And Rahu Moon is, you know, has been triggered at the moment. Now, I'm not going to get into this in terms of the diagnosis for cancer, because if I go down that route, then you're going to be start looking at it and thinking, oh, do I have this in my chart? I'm not going to start talking about cancer. But you could easily just talk about the nodes, especially Rahu, more especially in terms of that, because Rahu tends to distort things and like thinking about how cells divide and proliferate and all of that. And then you throw in Jupiter into the mix and the Jupiter aspect in his birth chart, as well as by transit right now, it's that kind of Jupiter and Rahu kind of proliferation that could really get out of hand. So Jupiter isn't always good when you talk about it for Cancerians. It's the sixth lord of illness and it's transiting Rahu, his eighth lord right now in his 10th house. The fact that that kind of proliferation obviously has led to a cancer diagnosis. Again, that's just one part of a cancer diagnosis. You wouldn't say it just based on that. But what I find more interesting is how he's made this very public. It's 10th house. That's where it's impacting him. So the fact that he and both he and the Princess of Wales, actually, she has also come out very publicly about her abdominal surgery. We don't know what it was, but she's had some surgery as well. 10th house. So again, I think that's really interesting how Jupiter now, the sixth lord, transiting through the 10th house been aspected right now by Mars, Saturn and Rahu and he having Rahu in the 10th house been transited by Jupiter right now, Jupiter's in Aries. I think that's really fascinating how it's been made so public um, so quickly after straight after the diagnosis. It's not like no keeping it private, just like get it out there, uh, which is admirable in a way. But um, in another way, you wonder why that's been made public so quickly. And we'll get to this in a while because I do think there's some changes afoot. So anyway, that's King Charles. His dashes, I'll show you. He's in Jupiter. Jupiter, again, sixth lord, transiting Rahu in the 10th house. Rahu, the eighth lord. This is a disease that's been very prominent now. And it's, again, a Jupiter-Rahu kind of thing, which, again, generally would say maybe a cancer type of thing. So um, we don't know what kind of cancer it is as yet. That might make that public in due course. It's Jupiter's son as well. And it's Virgo Dasha in the sign-based Dasha, Chara. 
So Jupiter, as I said, sixth lord, sun is debilitated in the fourth house. Fourth house is the doctor, the healer. It would be interesting to see how as well with sun in the fourth house opposite the 10th house, how again, he's made this very public. But I'm wondering, you know, is it, you know, it's almost like this kind of the treatment plan as well will be made public. Which we shall see. But again, the sign that's asked, that's impacted here is Venus in or Virgo with Venus in Virgo. This is interesting because Ketu is at this degree now, 23 degrees. The eclipse happens here on the 25th of March. It's at 10 degrees of Virgo. It's in his third house. Third house is the eighth from the eighth. This is also to do with health and longevity and vitality and energy. And Ketu's transiting as Venus, his fourth and 11th Lord, where his son is and his Mercury is. So there's definitely some trigger here for him. Well, obviously, he's just had a diagnosis. But generally, what's said uh, with Ketu transiting Venus is that the person ought to keep their life very simple. And if they, you know, oftentimes, obviously, something happens in their life for them to have to keep it simple. So he's having to draw back from his public engagements now and keep his life simple. Obviously, he's got a diagnosis. He needs to look after his health. So that's Ketu transiting Venus. It's just simplify your life and just pull back from all your engagements. So that's kind of where that is. That's the eclipse on the 25th of March. And then two weeks later, on the 8th of April, it's in his ninth house. Again, ruled by Jupiter, his sixth lord, transiting through 10th house. This is a very public sort of diagnosis, you know, and the fact that Rahu has already triggered this eclipse. It's again, it's admirable, like I said, and I think there's a reason for it. And it might be that there's a reason of how it's been treated and how doctors go about treating him and talking more openly about cancer. I think that's maybe his role here. He is that kind of person anyway. He's just somebody who wants to help in another way. He's a Cancerian after all. Um, they they just generally want to help out in some way and making it public is probably part of that, I would say. So anyway, that's um, King Charles. Let's look at Camilla. Same cancer rising. In this case, I think she's been very impacted in another way, but we might not hear about that. She might even be dealing with something herself personally, but obviously she's dealing with her husband now being diagnosed with this illness with Saturn in her sign because Saturn rules for cancer, the seventh of the other, the partner and the eighth together. And it's in her sign and it is the Dasha. So she's in Venus Saturn and it's Pisces Dasha. Venus Saturn, Venus is hidden away in the 12th house with her moon, the Lord and Mercury. She's very hidden away. She's always been very hidden away, literally, in their relationship. And Saturn in a very prominent position, which is, again, hidden. Saturn is least happy in the first house because it makes the person want to hide. Um, so now she's in the Saturn Dasha. And even when you saw her at the coronation, I mean, she was just not comfortable at that. I mean, it was quite clear she's not comfortable in this very kind of front and center role. She's maybe getting more comfortable with it, but Saturn in the first house not comfortable, and now she's having to deal with her husband's illness. So this is not an easy time for her, personally, with Venus Saturn. Venus Saturn Dasha, in general, also for people, is generally a turning point in their life where something big happens and they kind of make a big change. So again, second chart I'm showing you that is showing big change on the horizon. Because again, it has to show up in all of these people's charts. It's their, They're all going to be impacted in this one family. Um. So Saturn, Venus, and Venus in the 12th house, as I mentioned. Um, Jupiter, again, the 6th and ninth Lord. Jupiter's transiting the 10th house. This is obviously, again, again, making it more prominent, more and more prominent. And not a Rahu moon conjunction here, although it's a Rahu aspect on the moon in the 12th house. Uh, it's a Rahu Mars conjunction with Ketu in the 5th house. So that's the link she has through the, the nodes. There has to be a node link, to be honest, with the royals. So that's Camilla. Let's look at the next set of charts, which is Prince William, soon to be perhaps King William, and Kate Middleton or the Princess of Wales, perhaps soon to be the Queen. Um, so let's bring up her chart as well. So I think I put her in as Princess of Wales. Yes. So Catherine, Princess of Wales. So I'll first go to, again, you can see Cancer, Rising, Rahu, Moon, Conjunction. So we'll get to that in a minute. But um, first of all, let's look at this is different. Just like Prince Harry, you'll see, and the Queen who died, Prince, the Queen Elizabeth, all have Sagittarius rising. 
And in this case, Prince William and Queen Elizabeth had have Ketu in Sagittarius. So this is different. This is more royal in a sense, just like Leo's royal in a sense. Sagittarius is royal, but now when you put Ketu, which rules Maga in Sagittarius, it's even more so. And so I think Prince William and and again and eventually King William, I imagine, is just more suited to the the role as was Queen Elizabeth and and Prince Charles, King Charles now isn't as. Um, so that's another reason why I made the prediction anyway about him abdicating. I mean, I made the prediction last year, or the year before even, actually I made it even the year before 2022. But anyway, he's definitely, he's definitely more royal and he's able to kind of forego his own personal needs. That's Ketu in the first house to just step into this role. The thing is, the thing is, again, remember the opposite side of the equation always and the kind of rub always is Rahu. Rahu in the seventh house, just as with Queen Elizabeth, he is now in a Rahu Dasha. So if I show you his dashas, it's Saturn Rahu. It's Gemini as well, which is activating Rahu. And it's so it's all Rahu at, at right now. So it's Saturn Rahu. Saturn is very prominent in the 10th house as the second and third Lord, family and sibling is a big issue now. Saturn in the 10th. With Rahu, the third lord, Rahu is said to co-rule Aquarius, the third house, which is sibling, in the seventh house. So there's an issue here with the family and the sibling, i.e. Prince Harry. So there's some scandal, and obviously we've seen the scandal with Prince Harry, the outcast. Um, and now that it's Saturn Rahu, it's so prominent. Like Saturn's in the tenth house, Rahu's in the seventh house, which is the tenth from the tenth. It, it is likely to show him stepping up a bit more or having to, or maybe just King Charles has to step back a bit more from his duties and Prince William step up a bit more. That's my, what might happen in the coming few years. If he doesn't abdicate entirely, I don't know. But it's still making him more prominent. And it's always the case with Rahu. Whatever you achieve, there's always a price to pay. There's always something you have to put up with. And in this case, again, it's the, I guess, the alienation of his sibling, third house, Lord in the seventh house, his relationship might be affected, or obviously it's affected. His wife has just gone into hospital for surgery. She was in for weeks for some abdominal surgery. You can see here Rahu Moon. Moon is the eighth Lord in the seventh house. Seventh house is the partner. It's the son here as well, the ninth Lord, the father, all implicated here with this Rahu Moon Sun conjunction. And again, means he was born on an eclipse, a solar eclipse in his seventh house. And it's getting triggered right now in a big way. And the eclipses are going to trigger his 10th and 4th house in a big way in this year. First of all, we have, again, March 25th, the uh, 10 degree of Virgo lunar eclipse near his Mars. Then we have a total solar eclipse in Pisces at 25 Pisces in his 4th house, which is his home. And anytime you talk about the home and changes there, you're talking about changes in the home and career. And in, in royals, it's one of the same. Like when you step into a role, you're going to change your residence. So there's definitely changes on the horizon here, whether he just has to step up more or be more available in a role or whatever it is, Rahu is making him more prominent. And there's a price to pay here for sure. So that's Prince, maybe soon to be King William. Then we have Princess of Wales. Again, Rahu Moon. It's again over and over again. So this Rahu Moon and Sun opposite, she was born again on an eclipse. So again, if you are if you want to be married into a royal family or if you want your offspring to be married into a royal family, conceive your child at a time you know where they're going to be born around an eclipse. Okay, that's, an, that's a joke, obviously. Um, but that's it. You get born into a royal family because of eclipses. This eclipse energy, this Ketu Sun family sun second house for her son ketu in the sixth house then her moon her lord in the 12th house her in a way being able to forgo her own personal needs to step into this role um but it is bringing complexities because of rahu the eighth lord in the 12th house it's just that for her i think it's probably a better situation because it's seen as like a double negative when you have a eighth house lord in the 12th house it's this Ability she probably has of letting go of all that conflict, of letting go of all of those things and let it just kind of wash over her, I would say. And I think that this likely shows that she will get over this illness as well, whatever she's dealing with, and that she will move on from it. So that's more positive for sure. Uh, but it still creates a lot of fears and it's quite a close conjunction between Rahu and Moon in her chart. 
And if you notice as well, Prince William and notice the, the similarities, I mean, they were born in the same year. So it's it's not that it was that unusual, a few months apart. Going back to his chart, you can see here Venus and Moon are conjoined in a different sign. Rahu Moon are conjoined in the same sign. Saturn and Mars are conjoined in the same sign. Jupiter, Pluto, Ketu, Neptune. Go back to Princess of Wales. It's all pretty much the same, except Venus and Mercury are in a different sign, but they're still conjoined. So they, that's the same, Venus, Mercury. Rahu Moon is the same. Saturn, Mars is the same. Jupiter, Pluto is the same. Ketu, Neptune is the same. So a lot of similarities in these charts, apart from this different rising signs, different perspectives. So again, she's the queen. She's Cancer, the moon. He is Sagittarius. The, you know, he's the royal. He's the, the Ketu character, you know, coming in here. And she's the Cancerian queen character. But there's going to be a lot of kind of these kind of fears around this. And the transits right now, again, and Jupiter in the 12th or this sixth Lord in the 10th, you know, making this again, she's done the same. She's made this so public her illness. She hasn't said what it was exactly now, but she has she has made it public. Uh, it wasn't a private thing at all. It was Jupiter, the sixth Lord in the 10th house with all these aspects onto the 10th house. Again, making it very public and it might be made more public subsequently, like King, where they talk more and more about what actually the illness is and how they're treating it and so on. And again, it's making this public. So that's um, Princess of Wales. So you can see all of these charts so far, and I'm going to show you two more and that's it. All of them show big changes. So the last two are, of course, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. And again, we'll see changes. I think there's even bigger changes looking at Prince Harry's chart. And I'll show you that in a minute. First, I also want to just bring up Meghan Markle's chart. So similarities here are just astounding. But they always are in, they're more so probably in royal charts. But if you looked at your own family charts, you're going to see commonalities all the time. So Meghan Markle, Cancer rising again. In this case, again, born near an eclipse, between two eclipses. She was born with Rahu's son together in her rising sign now. And the moon which rules Cancer, her, her sign, is in the third sign, unlike Camilla and Catherine, unlike the current queen and the future queen. Meghan Markle has, is not hiding away. She's not putting her moon in the 12th house. She's putting her moon in the third. So... That's the difference with Meghan Markle. It's, it's very much more third house and it's very much more about her needs. Um, Rahu's in the first house, Ketu in the seventh house, therefore, obviously. So it's the relationship. She's born into it. She's married into it. That's quite obvious. Uh, but first, let's go back to Prince Harry. This chart, I feel like, is bringing up more changes in the more immediate time frame. And I'm going to show you why uh, in the dashes because he's in Rahu Moon and he's moving into Rahu Mars in March, 8th of March onwards, Rahu Mars for the last year of Rahu before next March 2025, he enters Jupiter. Massive change going on for him and in a positive way. The reason that is, is because Rahu is quite conflicted and it's to do with his sibling and the family, second house, third house, family and sibling, but specifically the sibling because third house Lord Rahu is in the sixth house of conflict. Rahu makes somebody an outcast, an outsider anyway. He's been cast out from the family in some way. You know, he has. Um, and this is Rahu. This is his experience now for many years. This is not, not going to be his experience from next year, 2025, because he's going to step into his own with Jupiter Dasha coming in, in his first house. Very prominent. I mean, I don't know what to say about this, except that I think he's going to be in a very prominent position. Now, maybe it's just that he's the brother of the king or... I don't know, maybe he's stepping into his own personal thing that he's doing on his own elsewhere. Um, it just seems to be he's, he's coming back into the fold in some way with this Jupiter. You can see similarities here as well. Venus as the king in Virgo, and it's again being transited right now by Ketu, and the eclipse is going to impact this, his 10th house, and then obviously the eclipse in his fourth house, showing changes in his career and his home. Again, just like Prince William. And just like the king, with the Venus here in Virgo, Ketu transiting Venus, again, suggests a need to simplify his life. But in this case, instead of maybe more the home life and the private life and health, as in the case for the king, it is health, but maybe it's, it's conflicted in some other ways. It's the 6th and 11th Lord um, in the 10th house. So it's more a kind of like a, 
an ambition and working towards something kind of conflict that's going on here that he's having to kind of really step back from. And I think he's probably having to right now. Obviously, his father is sick. But when we look at it from his moon, because his moon is the same as the king in Aries. So actually, Venus is a second and seventh lord from there, which is about family and relationship. So it's impacting his family and relationship. It's impacting his ambitions and his career objectives and all of that, this Ketu Venus and Eclipse. And the subsequent eclipse in um, Pisces, as I said, his ruler obviously is implicated here with Jupiter, you know, being the ruler of the eclipse, Jupiter being in his fifth house over his moon, you know, th and the aspects of all these planets, again, Mars at the moment, Saturn and Rahu all aspecting his moon, his eighth lord. You can see how there's this kind of uncertainty right now, and he's having to deal with that in terms of um, all of this that's cropped up. Um, Saturn opposite his son, his ninth house. Of course, Saturn's in his third house, just as it is with Prince William. Of course, it's the same thing. It's the sibling issue, but it's also the father issue. That's third and ninth house. Saturn in the third, opposite the ninth house. In the case of Harry, I think it's more impactful in one way because the son is opposite in the ninth house with Mercury there as well, the seventh and tenth lord. So definitely, I think this next year of Saturn's transit in Aquarius is probably going to be more impactful for Prince Harry in a way, in terms of maybe issues there with the father and the distance, perhaps, that he's felt in with the father and again with the sibling, and also maybe one and the other. It's like the distance with the sibling creating the distance with his father, maybe not the other way around. Um, Because again, Saturn's in the third house, opposite his ninth house, and the ninth house lord, son. So he's coming into Mars now in March, next month. And it's Rahu Mars and they're opposite. And it's sixth and twelfth house. It's conflicted. And this is going to be a pressurized environment for him to deal with for the next year. And he's not going to know what he's doing in the future. He's going to be very unclear about his future as the fifth lord in the twelfth house with Ketu. But again, as soon as he steps into Jupiter by March 2025, it's all change. So this chart, even more than any of them, kind of shows bigger changes I would say and I don't even know what to say about that except there are going to be more changes I don't know what specifically they will be I haven't really buried down into the charts but that's something to say Mega Markle their changes yes I mean the Dashas are Jupiter and Venus now and it's Scorpio Dasha the, the children are a prominent thing in her life right now obviously um, she's got young children but Jupiter again is is the Dasha. It's the sixth, the ninth lord in the tenth house. It's making it so prominent. And Jupiter in her chart is least happy in the third house. It's about fighting for something. It's about standing up for her own needs in a way. And third house Jupiter, third and Jupiter don't go hand in hand at all. And in a way, it's a double negative because the sixth lord's in the third, but the ninth lord in the third is also maybe this loss of fortune in a way or loss of position. They've literally lost their royal positions. And with Venus Dash as well, in the second, it doesn't maybe look so bad from the second point of view, but from a moon, it's the 12th. And from the moon, it's the second and ninth Lord, you know, family, title, fortune in the 12th, loss of family, title, all of that. She's lost her royal position. So Jupiter Venus isn't as obvious a benefactor in a way it would normally be a very much a beneficial time in a person's life but because of its afflictions here more so with Jupiter actually in the third overall I mean it's definitely kind of taking the, the kind of some of the goodness out of Jupiter even though there's some goodness there again it's involved in this eclipse in terms of the eclipse in Pisces and it's in, in a prominent tenth house again for her as with all of these charts I've shown you Changes are on the horizon with these eclipses for all of them. The eclipse happens right on her ruler, the lunar eclipse that is on March 25th at 10 degrees of Virgo. And her moon is at 11 degrees of Virgo with Saturn, her seventh lord, the relationship, the partner, Prince Harry, in other words, being impacted by this eclipse coming up. And so there's going to be changes for her and for her partner, for Prince Harry. Quite obviously, really, you might say, because of the changes that are happening with the royal family. So that's it for now. I mean, I think there's a lot I went through there. Obviously, I threw a lot of charts at you and I normally don't like to go through so many charts so quickly, but I just wanted again to show you how with family charts, there are always these kind of commonalities. You would see it if you looked at your own family's charts, there would have to be some commonalities. That's where the word family comes from, familiar. There's something familiar going on. And then therefore, when you look at any one of those families charts, 
if you're not sure about it from one family member, what's going on, just look at it from all of them and you get a bigger picture and you can see all of this change that's happening. And I actually did the same in, a, in an article I've just written about Donald Trump because I wasn't really quite clear about what's going on for him. And then I looked at all of his family's charts and it's all going on. So I'm going to release that very soon. Um, Donald Trump's chart, big changes up next year, obviously. Um, yeah, but anyway, that's the royal family. And and again, actually, Donald Trump, again, born in an eclipse. It's just this theme of eclipse and power and privilege and position. And then also these ups and downs that come with that kind of power and privilege and position and the controversies, the scandals, the Rahu kind of things that come in as well. Um, yeah, always endlessly fascinating when you talk about these kinds of charts because of the eclipses and because we're coming into eclipses again in a few weeks. We're going to see this ramp up again in all of these cases. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions about any of that, please feel free to post below. If you have any thoughts, if you have any comments, I would love to hear your comments. And I'll leave it there for now. We shall see how all of this pans out, of course, in the coming weeks. And until next time.